We currently see the world as a physical mechanical machine. Everything is chemistry and, and atoms and stuff like that. And it turns out the new understanding really, which is quantum physics, says it, it, the focus shouldn't be on the material things. The focus is on the invisible energy things, which include thought and belief. Because it turns out it's the invisible energy that controls the physical world. And, and this is what quantum physics talk about. They talk about what they call the field. And I say, well, what's the field? Well, they say uh, invisible uh, ener moving energy that influences the physical world. And I go, well, that definition is the same definition for spirit. Invisible moving forces that influence the physical world. So it's interesting that today's modern science is reconnecting us with the ancient history of spirituality, which really says that we are energy beings uh, inhabiting a physical body. Well, if we understand that, we start honoring the energy part, the invisible stuff that we've let go out of the equation, because all we look at is, give me the physical material, give me money, cash, give me things, and it turns out, it turns out that it's the energy is more more powerful the invisible stuff is more powerful than the physical stuff so turning our beliefs around and recognizing our thoughts are powerful elements mm -hmm. then all of a sudden it says let's start exercising our thoughts rather than exercising our wallet let's say in controlling the world and this gives an opportunity for all of us every one of us because we all have thoughts and we all have this energy and it's since thoughts create the science and this this is quantum physics they talk about that it's consciousness that creates the world mm -hmm. and so we all have to start recognizing we all are conscious mm -hmm. and all collectively our consciousness can change the world mm -hmm. so when you have a lot of people out there saying oh my god the world's out of control I say yeah but all you need is a lot of people who know that to say let's let's consciously create the different world and then we're not held victim of the world that we're in because we can manifest the world that we want mm -hmm. And that's why I get so excited by all the, the viewers out there because each viewer out there represents another consciousness that with all the other consciousness can change the world and this is what the evolution is all about. What we're facing is an evolution, not a physical evolution. It's how we relate to each other with our consciousness. So we're all coming together in one giant consciousness called humanity. And, and this is the evolution we're facing. Yes, you were explaining in your uh, lecture yesterday that you're, we were going from a, a church base, uh, very much model, to then, oh, now science is giving us the well, truth. The science has been doing that for 150 years. So we left the church based model of a spiritual world, yes. entered into the science based model of a physical world. We played both of those worlds now. And what's the evolution? The evolution says both of those worlds collectively make the world. So it's not just spiritual. It's not just material you have to bring both of them together and so now that we travel through the spiritual part of the world with the church running the world and then the material with the science running the world we're coming to a, a closure that says to understand the world you have to invoke both the spirit and the matter and that's why consciousness when I talk about spirit is that really our consciousness our energy our thoughts it's not physical it's energy and yet science now tells us those thoughts are shaping the physical world so uh, we can change the world we live in by just changing our thoughts but that means changing the programming yeah. that Which we is in the subconscious with. you're saying that 95 percent of things that happen in our life are coming from the subconscious now and that's just, that's the part that people have to wake up to because a lot of people think oh look my desire is to be successful have a great relationship have a great job i want all these things and now i go out in the world and it's like i'm not getting there i'm not making it and it's like and they get frustrated and they say well it's not me because my intention is to be successful and and uh, uh, I'm not I'm not being successful so it must be the world is against me and then all of a sudden I'm a victim of like well this is not the world I wanted and it turns out no it's not the world your conscious mind wanted but it's the world your subconscious mind has been programmed to create and the word subconscious by definition means below consciousness so you are creating without being conscious that you are creating this and and this becomes a problem because it turns out it's not the outside world that's keeping us from succeeding it's the invisible inside world that we've been programmed with through culture and family to to have lost our power and, and that's the biggest thing about this uh, propagation of the belief system this is this is not new you know it's very interesting uh, the Jesuits 500 years the Jesuits uh, of the church uh, they would they were boast they would say give me a child until it's six or seven and it will belong to the church for the rest of its life what they knew is what we're talking about in the new biology the first six years of your life is programming 
programming from other people, not your programming, parents, family, community. You as a child are in a hypnotic state for six years. Your brain is functioning in a hypnotic state, meaning the first six years is download, download, download. And the problem with the download is we're not conscious during that part, which means whatever was downloaded, you didn't filter it with your belief system. You didn't have a belief system. Whatever you heard, saw, or experienced in the first six years is a recording just like this is a tape recording, boom, down in your subconscious mind. And then we find that 95% of our life is actually from the subconscious mind with only 5% from the conscious. And you say, what's the difference? Conscious mind is you, your spirit, you, who you are, your wishes, your desires, what you want out of life, conscious mind. And I say, well, you want to be successful, great. You want a great job, great. That's all conscious. I say, but you're only using that mind 5% of the time. You're living your life 95% of the time with the programs that you got from other people. So the truth is, you are living other people's lives invisibly because it's called subconscious, meaning you don't see it. And so when you are creating these behaviors, you yourself don't even know you're doing it. And if your behaviors are not supporting you, then you sabotage yourself without even you knowing you're doing it. And that's where the victim comes in. It's like, oh my God, I want to be successful. I'm not. The world's against me. I'm a victim. It turns out, no, you were programmed not to succeed. And you're engaging the program without you seeing it. So we were sabotaging ourselves without ourselves knowing it. That's why the new biology, I want people to wake up. That's the wonderful thing, because those people out there that have fallen in love, and, and I, you know, if you could go back in your mind, just for, you know, I want you to go back to that point where you fell in love. I, I call it the honeymoon period, where you did this. And I, say, I ask you a couple of questions. I say, when you were back in that love state, head over heels in love, um, were you healthy? And it turns out almost everybody says, yes, I, you know, you know, exorbitantly healthy. Everything was great. And I said, did you have energy? I go, oh, we had tremendous energy to be active day and night in this love period in the honeymoon. I go, yeah. And then when I say, uh, uh, how about uh, was life so much fun that you couldn't wait for the next day to have more of this experience? And the answer was yes, because it was so great. And I go, well, think about it. You created health. You created energy. You created a, a world that was so beautiful for you when you were in love that you couldn't wait for the next day to have more of this world. And, and, and what it turns out is, well, how did our world which could have been a crazy world before you met this person then you meet this person and then the next thing you're in this this great honeymoon experience okay uh, and then your world today is heaven on earth yesterday was hell today's heaven on earth because you fell in love uh, and then what I want people to know is that was not an accident that wasn't just a wow what wow that just happened it's like you created the love experience and in the process of creating the love experience you created health for yourself energy and you created the world that was so beautiful for you that it was heaven on earth and, and why is this important for me to let you know and basically it said this was not an accident this was a creation and if you understood how you did it and now we know why how it happened and that is remember our conventional understanding is we run our lives 95 percent of the time from our subconscious programming when you are falling in love you actually don't go into the subconscious program because your uh, the conscious mind is so excited about being here it doesn't leave and, and and that's why the problem most of the time is our minds thinking and when the conscious minds thinking by definition it's not paying attention and that's when the subconscious programs run when you're in love the conscious mind doesn't want to go anywhere it wants to be right here and and take in all that love so this is one time in your life where you have a tendency to stay in the conscious mind I said well what happens when you stay in the conscious mind the answer was you created heaven because you were creating from your wishes and desires but the moment life gets busy again and your conscious mind starts to travel then you go to the default and the default is a subconscious program but those programs came from your parents your family and community so they're not even your beliefs so you start living other people's lives so for me what does it all mean and as you express is like when we're in love we create heaven on earth what if we could learn to stay in our conscious mind which is called Buddhist mindfulness it's a practice it means that you can then have a honeymoon every day for the rest of your life on this planet because it was only when we get out of our conscious mind that we return back to the hell on earth again and and that's because we were actually creating that without ourselves even knowing it when we have a group of people and we do like kinesiology muscle testing one of the questions that I love to ask the first question in muscle testing is you know get ready to do a muscle test hold out your arm and, I, and then make a statement I love myself the most surprising thing is I think up to 80 percent of the audience will not test positive for that belief and that's because during our childhood development we were so criticized by our parents and our family and criticized to do better 
which meant at some point is, well, uh, you know, why, why are we being criticized? Well, our parents want us to do better, but if our subconscious mind's just recording the criticism and our conscious mind's not there, then our belief of who we are are the critical things like, oh, you're not smart enough, you're not lovable enough, you're not, uh, you can't do sports, uh, you're not, you don't deserve things. These are what parents say. When we put that down in our subconscious, that becomes our belief system, our subconscious, and since we run our lives 95% of the time from that, uh, that's why when you check, do I love myself, and the answer comes out, well, what kind of childhood language did you hear from your parents? And the issue is that's why 80% of the people uh, cannot test well for loving themselves because their subconscious never got the program from the parents. Oh, you're the most wonderful, loving child, and you you can do anything, and you know we support you in everything and all that. If you don't get that, then you got criticism. And if that criticism went in the subconscious mind, then that was recorded and you become the criticism. All of us, we should test that as just, do I love myself? And why is this an issue? If you can't love yourself, then how are you going to find somebody to love you? Because the first thing you were, your psychology would say was, I can't love myself, and this person says they love me, why would they love me, and I, can't, I don't even love myself, so they obviously are not a good judge of love, because if they're loving me and I don't love me, then we, we don't agree on that. Uh, and people sabotage themselves because of these subconscious beliefs. So to really to fall in love, the first thing is to, you've got to love yourself. 